Bob Magnuson for Theowani Mouthpieces. And today I want to talk about something that I just feel everybody avoids because it's really a pain in the neck. And very much on amateur and professional levels, everybody ignores the value and understanding of what the reed really does. <laughs> it's just my opinion, but I play many woodwind instruments. I'm a studio musician. My name is not on the billboard. I'm just sometimes in the band. I've played on many, many recordings with many artists, blah, 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 TV commercials, film scores, etc. So I enjoy never having a day job and playing music all my life. So my opinion has some value to some players out there. Um, I just want to support the saxophone community in general. I go to a lot of these websites and I can never even enter them because people have all these other ways of looking at the reed. So I just want to express my way of looking at the reed and in combination with a wonderful mouthpiece. Now I don't even endorse for many companies anymore. I just don't want to. Uh, I don't even endorse for Theowani, but I just love his products and we're friends and he loves to talk about mouthpiece. He's a wonderful instrumentalist. He listens to many, many players and he understands the science and technology and musicality of what a mouthpiece really needs. Okay? So now with that all said, the living reed it's a living thing when people buy all these reeds expensive reeds that's great but as soon as you put them in your mouth the saliva everything that's part of your chemistry is going to go into that mouthpiece and what happens the reed changes now what okay the now what for me is knowing how to adjust the reed a lot of people there's a lot of tools out there a lot of people use sandpaper that's all terrific but what I learned early on in the 80s, being a New York studio musician, was that all the best players, I would say Lou Marini, George Young, Andy Schnitzel, all these guys, Michael Brecker, David Sandberg, they'd all have reeds marked. And they'd have four reeds. Like, they knew their equipment, and they had to have four reeds, because they were working all the time, and they had to sound consistent constantly. A lot of players just love to get one reed and play it to, to the end. That's fine, but you can have a better experience and have a more feeling of well-being having several reeds always available to you. Also, it helps you to choose the right mouthpiece. A lot of times we're using ligatures, mouthpieces, spending lots of money, saxophone necks, pads, so many things that do make a difference, of course, but they start to get further and further away from the actual reed itself and what its function is. Um, and purpose really is. Now for me, I'll be very quick. The reed has to flex where it leaves the mouthpiece. See this? I'm just gonna press. See how the reed will press it. Now over here it's moving. Over here it's not moving as much. So what I do is I move the fibers. I have all tools I make. And I just move the fibers. I'm not cutting the veins. I'm moving heavy spots just in that fire. And see how it bends? Now I come across. I curve it. I want to see this flexibility from where it leaves the mouthpiece, and that's where all the expression is. Okay, now once you get the reed working absolutely correctly, then mouthpieces become a whole other world. Okay, so now also the concept of moving air, I feel a lot of players don't necessarily concern themselves with. And I'll tell you a quick story. The quick story is I saw David Sanborn once at a music shop. And I love his playing, of course, of course. And he was playing, and it didn't sound that great. It didn't sound that big. It didn't sound anything like I heard him on any recordings. And I was confused. I was like, wow, that's very interesting how I thought it would be just blowing me away in a music store. But his concept is what it's all about. There's a concept to how you're moving air, how you use velocity of air to lift the sound. Okay. If you have an eight-star mouthpiece with a soft reed, it's going to sound loud on the stage. But if you're in Carnegie Hall, you're not going to be heard out to the 20th row other, with, other than a black of sound. Sometimes a, a smaller chamber mouthpiece with a harder reed and an adjusted tip is going to lift with less push, but just velocity of air and lift out and be heard into the audience. I'm also an oboe player. You can't play the oboe loud. So you have to have a focus of that sine wave and where it vibrates to lift above other instruments. Okay, but anyway, so I like to move air because when you use air, it records well. So now listen to this mouthpiece and bending the notes. I like to bend them a little bit of a half step so I get a uh, color and my own personality. If the mouthpiece plays its own way, it's not going to be personal. What Theo does, he incorporates personality 
for you to find in every mouthpiece. So listen, like a tune like Angel Eyes. <laughs> things invisible for me because it's working so nicely. And playing soft like that is very important. If you go into playing a professional gig and all of a sudden on your tenor part it says, you know, playing a low part with a cello, you have to know how to play softly. If you bang the note and it happens too many times, you're going to get insecure and people are going to say, hey, what's going on with him? So we always look for the high notes, the soloist approach to playing, which is wonderful. But there's so many other things about playing the saxophone, playing in a section, blending, comfort, pitch, endurance, okay? But knowing your read, the living read, knowing it, working with it. I give many classes and private students uh, insights on Zoom, everything with using tools. I have all these different kinds of tools. And just to sculpt the heart, sculpt that heart round off edges that kind of v shape get into the tip and there's where all that see how it folds and bends perfectly and then that's where all the responses okay if you'd like to email me i'll always answer the questions and help you as much as i can keep playing music the world needs it <laughs>